everyone. Thanks for having me, BPI. Thanks for having me on stage. It's great to be here in front of such a distinguished uh, audience here. Um, so my background is I spent 12 years as an investment banker um, and had a front row seat to the evolution of consumer finance globally uh, since the early 2000s. So as a young investment banker at Goldman Sachs, uh, I was working in the specialty finance business. Uh, we were really watching how uh, the levering up of balance sheets was taking place. We had a front row seat to banks like Capital One and others really transformed themselves digitally in the 2000s. We saw you know, really how products were evolving in the 2000s. Then we saw the credit crisis in 2007 and 2008. I actually happened to be in England and worked on the first um, bank that actually failed, uh, Northern Rock. So if you, if you all remember back in 2007, 2008, it was the first securitization vehicle that actually went bankrupt in a bankruptcy remote entity. Um, so with that vantage point, what we really saw was that globally, consumers were incredibly financially stressed, and the transformation that was happening here in Silicon Valley, with consumers getting a very up and close uh, understanding of how to live their financial lives, their digital lives, on Facebook, on social media channels, really hadn't made its way over to uh, consumer finance. And that was really the vantage point that we had going into um, you know, really thinking about what should be the customer acquisition and customer retention platform of the future going into the 2000s. So with that vantage point, I started Moneyline uh, in 2013. Moneyline today, you know, we, we call it America's most powerful financial membership. We believe that just like consumers consume Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, subscription models, they should really consume the private bank in a similar way where they have one chassis for borrowing, saving, and investing. And today, the company is in four offices. We're headquartered in New York City with an office here in San Francisco. Uh, we have a large um, group of engineers and data scientists in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And those 150 people really drive our ability to, in a cost-effective manner, bring solutions to the 90 million Americans that self-identify as really struggling with finances, with the products that the 1% have access to on Wall Street. So I'll just walk you through a couple of examples of this, uh, but it was really my front row seat to the global financial stress that consumers were experiencing that led to us uh, building Moneyline over the last five years. So today, Moneyline is the private bank for everyone. It's the one place where consumers can go to get a checking account, a investment account, high yield savings, they can aggregate all of their other accounts to Moneyline and get that financial advisor right in their pocket without necessarily paying any fees for that service. Uh, so today we have built an interface layer on top of the existing banking system. We partner with a bank to provide next generation DDA capabilities. This is meant to be a consumer's primary bank account. It's no fees, there are no ATM fees for 65,000 ATMs nationally. Uh, there's no account maintenance fees. There's no account service fees. So a lot of the pain points that consumers have, if you think about the top 10 banks in 2017, top 10 banks earned about $120 billion in NSF fees, ATM fees, uh, commission fees. So this business model of inertia happened to be something that became a pain point for consumers. And really, we're able to build a large user base on the fact that uh, we're able to deliver this chassis for an incredibly low cost to consumers. And one of our advantages as a fintech startup is that our cost to service these four types of accounts is mitigated by the use of technology. Despite being a broker dealer, despite being regulated by 50 states and two different federal regulators, we're still able to deliver a very low cost of service for this chassis and giving, giving consumers an incredibly uh, powerful financial tool. Uh, from a consumer value proposition perspective, what we offer is incredibly, uh, is incredibly clear. And I'll play a small video for you that shows you how the consumer interacts with the Moneyline platform, all driven around that one pain point of financial stress. So our mission, again, dedicated to ending financial stress for all Americans. Um, and here's a quick video that shows the clear consumer value proposition. We all have banks, but I belong to a financial membership. It's an app called Money Lion. It's new and it's free. First, you put money into your checking, where it's insured, just like any other bank. 
with zero monthly fees, zero overdraft fees, and zero ATM fees. Zero forever. And MoneyLion makes investing just as easy as checking. You can add as little or as much as you want. Need an advance before your next paycheck? MoneyLion lets you borrow from future you. With zero interest, no fees. When life throws you those surprises and you need a little help, MoneyLion gets you out of those sticky situations in less than 15 seconds with a loan that actually helps your credit. And when you spend, you get up to 12% cash back. So yeah, I used to have a bank, but now I belong to something that gives and doesn't take. I belong to a MoneyLion membership. You can too. So, so we get the question all the time is how can you do a lot of these services for low cost or free to the consumer? How can we do 0% APR cash advances? How can we provide a bank account and not necessarily get compensated for it without, without the fee structure? So what we realized in our data over the last five years was that the American consumer has nine months of small surpluses where they make just enough to get by, usually $50 to $100 every month of surplus. But they have three months of massive deficit. And in those three months, really things go bad for the American P&L, things go back, bad for their balance sheet. And that's really when uh, they need different credit options. So what we said was, in those nine months, why can we affect behavior change where the consumer is actually buying into their own investing capability? Um, so what consumers do on the Moneyline platform is in those nine months, they auto-invest anywhere from $1 to $50 into a uh, purpose-built investment advisory chassis that we have built for them. Now, think about it from a magnitude perspective. We're giving a registered investment advisor cap uh, caliber efficient allocated account to a consumer who's making fifty dollars to $100,000 a year. Uh, with that behavior change, what we started realizing was that consumers were actually opting in to put money into that advisory account, learning how to save, learning how to invest. 87% of our members are first-time brokerage account openers with us. And then what we started seeing from a behavior perspective was that in those three months when things really went awry on the balance sheet or on the P&L, consumers would have enough in their investment account to borrow on a secured basis from us at incredibly low rates. So that behavior change has been exciting and it's been very interesting to see. And that's really what allows us to take credit risk on a secured basis. So 87% of the credit that's extended on our platform today is secured somehow by assets in an account. And that's really the behavior change that we're seeing that, okay, if we charge $10 a month to this consumer for consuming the private bank, plus the idea that they're building assets allows us to very profitably and economically offer this private bank to, uh, to everybody. And really from a engagement perspective, what we are seeing that uh, consumers are engaging with Moneyline as much as they do with LinkedIn, Snapchat, and Facebook. Our DAU to MAU numbers are uh, the reason why we're able to have conversations with our consumers around every single financial inflection point. So if you look at the product today, it's really your financial magazine. It is your own data. We use aggregation sources. Um, we have over 10 million accounts now linked to our uh, personal financial management platform. And this allows us to use the power of the community to give look-alike recommendations, uh, contextualized and personalized to each individual. Um, so the other thing we realized in our five years of existence is that consumers hate hearing bad news. So from a product design perspective, we spent a lot of time, we saw lots of churn when we started saying, hey, you're about to NSF tomorrow, or you've spent $5,000 more than you've, you've made in the last two months. People generally don't like hearing that. So there's been lots of product design and user experience research that's gone into designing the, uh, the interface that you see in front of you today. So things that you'll see in the middle, safe to spend, this is the application for artificial intelligence. Uh, you know, AI and machine learning are oft used and sometimes uh, incorrectly used, but really this is a uh, decay chart. So we know how the population spends and earns, we know how their paycheck decays, and we know sometimes shocks happen. So this is just a simple example of a recommendation we're giving to the consumer just to be thoughtful about how they're spending. Um, and on the right side of the page are more examples of just very simple graphical ways to introduce financial literacy to the consumer. 
What we see in the United States or the societal problem is that personal finance isn't taught in high school, it's not taught in college, and most adults are generally unequipped to really think about goals. They're un unequipped to think about, should I be uh, buying life insurance in my 20s? Should I be saving in a certain way for my child's uh, college? Should I, be should I be saving for retirement? We're demystifying a lot of that basic financial advice to consumers that generally are um, you know, left out of that conversation in the United States. So financial stress doesn't discriminate. Uh, I was talking to you a little bit about my own personal experience having a front row seat to the evolution of the financial markets uh, through the credit crisis and through the early 2000s. The first wave of FinTech was unbundle the bank. So we use the mantra of financial stress doesn't discriminate either with you, whether you make $50,000 or if you make $500,000. And that's really how we think about measurement what we try to do at Moneyline is we try to unearth to consumers a very simple way, just like Fitbit will tell you how many steps you walked or how you did at the gym this week. We try to use that mantra to build products that demystify that element of financial stress for our consumers. So I'll play another quick video in terms of how consumers see it but as, a, as a product demo, but really it's this philosophy around untangling um, what's, what for most Americans is a very big pain point. So in addition to, of, of course, the cool product, from a philosophy perspective, what we're trying to do is we're trying to convince our users to spend 60 seconds every day engaging with their personal finances. So here's just another example of the morning magazine a consumer would see inside the Moneyline ecosystem. It's all a categorization, it's all transactions, and it's all monthly summaries. From a lifestyle perspective, we believe that the bank of the future is not a rote bank account, it's not the ability to lend money, it's not necessarily an investment management capability, but it's rather, engaging, it's, it's rather engagement, it's content, and it's the ability to unearth better outcomes and better insights for the consumer. So what we're seeing engagement, we track engagement on a second-by-second um, second basis, and what we have seen is that the more we make it about um, literacy, the more we make it about you know, e-commerce, the more engagement consumers have with our finance app. And of course, 0% cash advances, the ability to get a fee-free bank account are all intertwined in uh, that conversation about lifestyle with the consumer. We heard from Matt Financial before this, uh, you know, the, if you look at the Asian markets, they have uh, done a very good job with making a chat app also somewhere where you book tickets also somewhere where you do your wealth management. It's where you, uh, you know, speak to your family, your wife, your spouse. Um, we think that the United States is trending towards that direction as well. Uh, we disagree with a lot with some of our competitors in terms of just do one thing and one, do one thing uh, with focus. We believe that if we focus just on financial stress, the different features just become different manifestations of how that consumer interacts with the platform. So from, a, uh, from integrating all of uh, banking, investing, and lending, what that allows us to do is it allows us to be a part of every conversation around the inflection point. Here's a live example of someone who's uh, spent at Jet.com. So one of our features really is how do we take that and have a conversation around, um, around credit with the consumer? So the eraser purchase uh, feature just allows the consumer to swipe left and turn that transaction into a point of sale transaction where they can finance that over three, four, six, or 12 months. And this is really ultimately from a lifetime value perspective, how we keep relevant to the consumer and we keep top of wallet at point of sale, we keep top of wallet for financial literacy and we keep top of mind for the primary checking account relationship. The more the consumer does and the more the consumer builds habit, this is where the application of machine learning and AI really comes into play the more their credit line increases. The more they invest with us, the more, we're, the more risk we're able to take with them. 
the easier it is for them to log into the, into the device, it's the easier it is for them to redeem rewards and so on and so forth. It's all behavioral economics. It's all really uh, the amalgamation of literacy and the, and the uh, usage of the, of the application that drives um, benefits for us as well. So that's the erase function. And finally, I'll end with saying that we are reimagining the private bank for millions of Americans. It's not just a vision, it's built. We lead with financial wellness, and we really fulfill that promise of financial empowerment. Here we roar through better banking, better investing, better credit opportunities, and a rewards and lifestyle platform that surrounds the consumer around multiple financial inflection points. So thank you for your time. Excited to be here, and happy to catch up afterwards.